welcome to Library Connection. I'm your hostess, Mandy Cantrell. We have, at the library have just finished up a fabulous summer for children with lots of activities and programs and so many thousands of books read to have our children ready to go back to school. And now it's time to turn our attention to the adults uh, in our community. Our, my guest today is our director, Doc, Doc, Dr. Shirley Spears. She's joining me today and we're going to be talking about the Brown Bag Adult le Lecture Series, Looking Forward to the Past. That's like, a, do you like that title? I like the title. That's a great title. Great. Yeah, I do. I, I, I think it was. We, we laughed about it when we put it down because it sounds like a contradiction. <laughs> <laughs> well, it draws your, your, draws your, mind, your attention well, to it. Well, when you come to Brown Bag, that's exactly what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You're looking forward to the past yeah. because most of the time we're talking about the past. And that's right. We're either singing about the past, we're talking about the past, or we're looking at the past on the screen. Right. So it is very much, our series is very much about the past. and. It's uh, wonderful to um, for TV 47 to allow us to have this show yes. and for us to be able to come on and talk to the public about what we're doing at the library because we want maximum participation in everything that we do. Right. And we just happen to have this wonderful adult series that we've been doing for about 20 years. And so we've right. built a reputation across the state and we have some good programs coming up. Oh, Andy. we do. And it's such a fun <coughs> time. The 11 o'clock is the so social hour, mm -hmm. brown bag, for a few refreshments, mm -hmm. and then the, uh, the, the lecture starts at 12 noon right. in the and auditorium. We'll, right, and we encourage everybody, just bring your sandwich and come yes. on down. We'll have the drinks for you and the dessert. And so a lot of husbands, <coughs> excuse me, mm -hmm. a lot of husbands and wives come in and they'll meet friends, and it's a great time. It's a right, great social right. time, especially for retirees when church and those kind of things may be their act, main activities, but this way they have something else to get together to do. And maybe they're from different places, different right. churches, different neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So it, it really fosters networking, I think. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you do work, you can manage to take your lunch hour from 12 to mm -hmm. 1 at work. It's, it's designed for that also. So mm -hmm. it's always a good crowd. So the first one is coming up September 16th. The best of the jazzy blues and more with Elnora Spencer. She's wonderful. Mm -hmm. She is. She's a really, really good singer. And in fact, she's been named to the Alabama Blues Hall of Fame. And wow. she's sung with the, uh, the symphony, Alabama Symphony Orchestra. Yes. And she's part of what's called Legends at the Moonlight Cafe. So oh. Elnora, she has quite a name for herself. And she sings a lot of different kinds of songs. Wow. And what the audience particularly likes, she has a, a combo, and of course Buddy Simpkins will be playing yes. the drums, and oh, he good. arranged for her to come. Mm -hmm. And she'll have her bass player and her keyboard, a piano player, mm -hmm. and maybe a guitar. And I've talked to her several times, and she sings a lot of different things, but for our audience, basically, she'll sing a, a lot of the songs, I've Got You Under My Skin, and oh. uh, uh, was it Fly Me to the Moon? Yeah. And, she sings all those kinds of songs for them, and they just love it. And of course, the music is wonderful too. Yes. But Elnor is, um, she's she's quite a singer, and she's also kind of a character. She's a lot of fun with her singing. So, I like kicking off with music. It's kind of a high note. Oh yes. No pun intended, <laughs> but it's, we all love music. It's fun. Music is fun, and it brings people together and it excites them about what we're about to do. And so we start off, and there's so much history in song. It's just a wonderful way to look at and think about the past. It stimulates so much memory. So that's our first program that we're having. And right, it's right. Wednesday, September the 16th. Wednesday. All of the programs are on Wednesdays. Very um, important point. All yes. at 12. All at 12. Mm -hmm. The next is Wednesday, September 23rd, Faye Gibbons. Now is that Haley? Haley. Haley. Mm -hmm. The story of a Depression era Georgia mountain girl. Mm -hmm. Haley is kind of an old um, name, and we had a board member one named Mrs. Haley. Time oh. named her name was Mrs. Haley Light, one of the Haley. best board members on the face oh. of the earth, and she's <laughs> passed away now, but she was wonderful. And uh, I've had Faye before, mm -hmm. and she is actually uh, this is a somewhat autobiographical uh, novel, okay. and it's about a girl whose father was killed. And her mother moved, she and her younger brother, in with their grandfather, who was a hellfire and brimstone minister, mm -hmm. and believed in living a very, very strict life, and all the money that they earned was to be turned over to him, and he had all kind of really strict rules and regulations for a young teenage woman, oh. uh, girl, and her brother. And so it's the story of how she coped with losing her father, with going with her mother into this very austere and strict environment and working so hard in the cotton fields and 
uh, trying to figure out how to make a little extra money. And <clears throat> it's just a poignant story that I think this age group particularly, because I know I love Faye and I love her stories and I love her books. We have her books yes. in the library. And oh, so yeah. I think Faye lives in Deetsville down close to Wetumpka, Alabama. Okay. And she, one time she did a sea breeze for us by the schools. We sent, we had grant money and we sent her out to the schools. We always keep the kids in mind and try to do oh, things yes. for them. So I think Hallie, the story of a depression era Georgia mountain girl will resonate with our people. I really do. I think, and she's looking forward to coming. She's looking forward to being That's at the B.B. Comer Library. She says it's one of her top venues in the entire state of Alabama is to come to the Comer Library. That's correct. Well, we have a wonderful facility in the, in the auditorium, and that's nice to hear someone talk about, sort of talk about their life. By, it is, and, and she has not been since we have our new auditorium. It's been oh, many years since oh, she's yeah. been, so okay. she'll be coming in and she'll be, she'll be thrilled with she the auditorium. Will be she really surprised. will. Next is Wednesday, September 30th, Peggy Jackson Walls, A Century of Gold Mining at Hog Mountain, 1839 to 1939. Many of the older people here will remember that there was, this was one of the prime gold mining sites in Alabama was Tallapoosa County and part of one other county over there. And Hog Mountain is the mountain where the, I think the best look was had with the pan in gold and bringing gold out. And of course, you know, Governor Patterson lives over on the Goldville Cutoff and he's back in that part of the world again and so he's very dear to our heart. And I think about him when I think about Hog oh, Mountain and New Site and that area over there. So. Peggy has, uh, she was Dr. Wayne Flint's student, and she taught for many years in the public schools. In fact, she taught our oldest daughter, Tanya, history at Benjamin Russell High School. Okay. So she's kind of okay. lived and breathed history, and she's done quite a, she's done several books. But she got interested in uh, the gold mining because she lives up in that area. And so Peggy's done lots of research. She knows a lot about when, uh, what went on there. She's conducted... Uh, tours for some of the organ historical organizations on those mining sites. Very knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. about so I think that, um, you know, we think about California when we think about striking gold and the 49ers and all that kind of stuff. But the hopes were just as high in this part of the world really? and people were just as committed to trying to solve their problems in life by striking it rich, paying in for gold. Mm -hmm. And actually bringing gold out from over there went on for a long time. Well, it's right here in our door, so I'd really like to know more about it and have only known that it went on there. I never have known much in the way of details about that. So I think Peggy will do a good program. She's been coming to Brand Bag Lectures for years. And finally one day she just came over and said, I'd like to do my gold mining story. Right. So anyway, I'm giving her a a chance to tell that story. Right. So nice to hear about our area. I it's, consider that our it, area. It is. I like the, some of the little local slant we have here. Right. That's great. <laughs> oh, the next one. Wednesday, October 7th, Troy Jones, mm -hmm. our own Troy Jones, the Nashville Experience, small town boy and big town songwriting. That well, again, great. local. And yes. I just think Troy is, his story is fascinating. I really do. I, I just love to know that somebody has perseverance that they know there's something else that they need to do and that they just trust God and, and take off after their dream. Right. Uh, Troy worked out at the paper mill okay. for a while, a long time. <clears throat> and of course, I'm sure he was always talking about songs and writing songs and thinking about songs. And so I think they started call him, calling him the Fort Liff uh, oh. philosopher or something <laughs> oh like that. He had a, a mm -hmm. handle, a moniker out there about the fact that he was uh, philosophical and his songs are quite philosophical and it's interesting because he wrote a long time and his dad had worked at the radio station and he would used to listen to his dad or maybe he'd go to the station with his dad and he would think I wish I could hear a song I wrote on the radio oh. and he talks about that and he'll be telling us all about breaking into Nashville because it's not that easy anymore and the way that Troy did it I don't even know if you can do it that way anymore the the, the route that he went with marketing his songs but you name the big country and western singers and most of them have something that's been written or co-written. He works for a place called, I believe it's Carnival Songs or something like that. And his last song, God Paints, was recorded by Alan Jackson. But I think um, his shift work really yes, put him <laughs> they really put him in the limelight and we all know about shift work and around this part of the world and with the mills here and all that and the different uh, aspects of shift work a lot of people work shift work yes, besides the mills very difficult but he capitalized on that thought in his written songs and i just have 
toyed with the idea for years of getting Troy to tell his experience and sing a little bit and illustrate some of his songs and tell where he got his yeah. ideas. And I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, I, I He's can't a great wait guy. to hear his story. I've heard his I, songs. I think so. I think it would be wonderful to hear him tell about what he went through trying yeah. to write songs and get them marketed. I'm sure it was a long, arduous journey and that his wife and family were very supportive oh, yes. of his dreams. So I, I love those stories. So, a lot of perseverance. That's right. wonderful. <laughs> All right, on Wednesday, October 14th, is Wayne Flint in Sylacauga. Who is the watchman, and what is she watching? Well, you know, I thought his title, of course, he furnished his title for me in his write-up also. And I knew when um, there was a book discovered by Harper Lee, yeah. and she is in a nursing home now, and I believe down in Monroeville oh, is where she is. And she has a, a lawyer that handles her affairs, and... So they discovered a book, and it's a book that she wrote before she wrote To Kill a Mockingbird. And the name of it is Go Set a Watchman, and it comes from a scripture um, in the Bible that talks about, um, she, says she uses the Bible to talk straight to Macomb and its people. And there's a specific person designated in the scriptures as a, quote, watchman. So she takes off on that. Well, you know, there's a furor. And I, I don't even remember how many millions of copies that book has already sold. And of course, To Kill a Mockingbird is considered one of the premier novels of oh, all time. Yes. Still a favorite. And it's amazing to me that from <clears throat> Monroeville, Alabama, we have that. It's only the only book that she's ever known to have written. So the fear our worldwide over this book and over the uh, circumstances and what would it reveal and you know, what really happened? It was just a big mystery connected with that, that she's never written another book. She researched a book on witchcraft in Alexander oh, City. Okay. I hope that's laying yes. around somewhere under a mattress, really. <laughs> Maybe they'll find that. But anyway, I knew when I heard um, all of the flap about this book, there's one person to go to, to know and to hear a little something about this story, and that's Wayne Flint. Wayne was really, really close friends with her sister, the lawyer, who lived to be over a hundred years old and oh, practiced my. law until she, you know, almost until she died. Oh my goodness! And he knew, uh, he knows, he calls her Nail. He knows Nail Harper Lee personally, and I knew that he would just have a take on it. So I called him one day, and I thought, well, he won't be talking about it right now. He's very sensitive to their yeah. feelings, mm -hmm. and he may not want to talk right now. Right it may now. be too early. So <clears throat> I called Dr. Flint one day and ask him, are you going to be talking about the book? And um, I said, maybe first of the year if you're doing it right. later. And he said, surely I talked to 246 people <laughs> yesterday in Auburn about this book. I'm ready. Good. So he scheduled you for me on October the 14th. I think we'll be having people coming in from all over the state oh, that that'll be wonderful. want the opportunity to listen to Dr. Flint. They're curious about the book. They've read the book. I have not read the book. We bought several copies and I always I always encourage everybody to let our customers have our books first. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we'll be probably a lot of us will be buying our own copies and reading right. them, and we'll want it for our collections anyway. But right now, we're circulating that book and encouraging people to think about it and get ready to hear Dr. Flint's take on it. Good. Well, we're going to take a break, and then we'll come back to talk about the rest of the Brown Bag Adult Series. Looking forward to the past. In central Alabama, 9,100 kids face going to bed hungry tonight. Hunger doesn't take a day off. There are kids right here, right now, that don't know where they'll get their next meal. Join Alabama Childhood Food Solutions and help put an end to childhood hunger in central Alabama. Make a difference. Donate today, by mail or online, to help ACFS feed hungry kids. There's no better time to share than now. Their next meal could come from you. Any meal, any time, it's a Huddle House on Highway 280. From the popular Huddle House Signature Waffle to our big house breakfast, including gravy and biscuit and loaded hash browns, it's a Huddle House. Try our Philly Cheese Steak Omelet. It's a sure hit, too. Our big house sandwich combos include Huddle Burger and Country Fried Steak. And for lunch or dinner, it's the often requested chop steak with mushroom gravy. Starting to get hungry? Head to the Huddle House. Our friendly and experienced team await you. Huddle House, Highway 280, any meal, any time. At Marble City Pharmacy, we're more than just a drugstore. Our gift shop boasts some of the most unique treasures you'll find anywhere. Come in and browse the vast selection of jewelry, purses, clothing accessories, and crafts. Let our friendly staff help you find that special card or gift for any occasion. Our dollar wall features selected sale items, and we stock a wide variety of specialty items. 
And if it is a drugstore you need, Marble City Pharmacy was named the 2015 McKesson National Pharmacy of the Year. Visit us today at Marble City Pharmacy. Since 1935, the Collins family has been the automobile business in Sylacauga. Bobby and Anderson Collins carry on that tradition today at Stop and Shop Auto Sales. Select from late model cars, trucks, and SUVs. And our vehicles do not go on the lot until they are thoroughly inspected by our experienced mechanics. At Stop and Shop Auto Sales, we offer a 30-day warranty on all our inventory. Family owned and operated for four generations. Stop and Shop Auto Sales, 230 West 1st Street in Sylacauga. Bobby Collins. Hello and welcome back to Library Connection. I'm your hostess, Mandy Cantrell. I've been talking with our uh, library director, uh, Dr. Shirley Spears, about our upcoming brown bag adult lecture series for this fall called Looking Forward to the Past. We have a lot of different programs coming up and tell us about uh, how are we able to do this at the library? We okay, we, Mindy, I'm, I'm glad to have the opportunity to mention the series and we've been doing it as I said for over yes. 20 years now. We started out sort of small and we wrote grants and had different ways of doing it and found our niche with the lunch break because that's yes. the time that retirees like to get on out and they've gotten up and gotten dressed and want somewhere to go and <clears throat> people can slide by on lunch. But we finally came into the concept of having someone to sponsor this series for us. And for the last five years, uh, the South First Bank uh, has Wonderful. taken care of that for us and they are committed to helping to offer something to the senior citizens of the community, to building community. Mm -hmm. And this is very much a part of building community yes. so that people have common interest mm -hmm. and they see each other and they network. And so I can't say enough good things about Randy Fields, Chris Kramer, and the staff down at the um, South First Bank because they do such a wonderful job of helping us to make this possible. Yes. So they're a great partner, and we appreciate them very much. And yes, we hope we that our people that participate will always say thank you to them because oh, yeah. it's a great gift. It is a great gift to our community. The next one coming up will be Wednesday, October 21st, former Governor of Alabama, John Patterson with Warren Trest, talking of Battle of, now I'm going to have to get you to say that. I, I would say it's guitar. I'm not guitar. sure. We'll have to come find out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a turning point in the... Tunisian campaign. Okay, I, I can't tell you how thrilled I was about this. I just, Warren Trist is wonderful. He used to be over at the Air University in Montgomery at Maxwell. Mm -hmm. He's such a wonderful historian, a great guy. But he is a person that sort of promotes <coughs> other people. And he's brought um, people for me, for, he's done one program for me before, but he brought uh, John Patterson to do the Bay of Pigs invasion. He was governor at that time. So he's brought Governor Patterson in, and he did the biography on Governor Patterson. Oh. Wonderful book. I think we just had sold a ton of those books <laughs> that day at the program. But the governor has gotten uh, older and in fragile health, and I think he turns 94 this month. And he is just such a wonderful presenter and such a still such a handsome guy, and we just love to hear him talk. And, but he has not been able to get out and do programming in quite a while. But... I was so excited when I emailed Warren Trist and said, do you have any programs on World War II that I might could incorporate into our series? Right. And he said, you know, Shirley, I think that Governor Patterson might could do the Battle of El Guitar because he was a junior officer in that battle. Oh. And he said, oh, he really and truly has a wonderful story about it. It was the first time that the Americans proved that they could defeat German tanks. Okay. So it's kind of a little landmark battle in, in a sense. And so I emailed him back and I said, oh, let's see if we can get him to commit because he said, oh, he wants to do it so much. Oh. He loves to come to Comer <laughs> Library and he wants to do it. Yes. And he said, Any, if anything should happen that he can't come, yes. we have a 12 minute uh, tape of his version of that battle and I will come and do that battle. I can't do it as well as him, but I will. But we have reason to believe that he will be here. Oh, good. And so he has said, surely put me down. I want to come. So we're looking so forward to seeing John Patterson again and having him at the library to tell about his war experience. I noticed on the tape that he said it was the most memorable night and day of his life when that battle occurred. He said, you know when the votes came in when I was elected governor and all those things that have happened to me in life, I don't remember any of them quite as well as I do or get as excited about as 
knowing about that battle and what that was like to be a part of World War II in the manner that he was there. So, you know, General Patton was uh, with the American troops, and of course, Rommel's troops were involved in the, uh, the campaign. It's an exciting story. It is. It's one I had never heard of. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about this battle, and I, you know, I've studied World War II, but I don't remember studying anything about El Guitar, the Tunisian campaign. But I think he'll do a wonderful job Great. with that. I really do. Great. So I look forward to that. I'll have to just say here, I'm always amazed that to the programs I'm able to come to that how much I learn. I mean, oh. the music is entertaining, I love yeah. it, but there's always something mm -hmm. to be learned. Learn even something. though I've, I've studied this in school. I know, me too. It's all so, so much to learn, I especially so from much. someone who has been through it. Excellent speakers. Right. This is a yeah. window that's closed in also. Oh, that's yeah. true. Wednesday, October 28th is Monique Laney, When Histories and Memories Collide, How Huntsville Made Sense of Its German Rocket Team's Nazi Past. Well, I decided that this would be a very exciting story. I had a Catherine Braun, who's done many programs for me before, he told me that Monique Laney has a, a wonderful story. She was born in Huntsville, and then um, I think her, her, either her mother was a German and her father was an American or vice okay. versa. And so she knows a great deal about the story of the German scientists yes. that were in Huntsville that helped us to come up with <clears throat> the very things that helped us to win the war. And so she did go back. They went to Germany and she was educated in Germany there okay. and then came back to Auburn University and she is an assistant professor with, there with Auburn University. Oh. So she's taking a look at the fact that we had, we brought all these uh, German scientists in and of course they were either Nazis or ex-Nazis or whatever the term would be. Mm -hmm. And when the stories broke about the atrocities and all the things that had happened and they started having the trials and all yes. that, it was something to come to grips with for the Huntsville population and for, Al for the mm -hmm. Alabama and American population as well, the phenomena of using the German scientists in our war campaign. Of course, many of us have strong feelings about that and how wonderful it was that we feel that in a way that God made a way for us to use what we had right. to come up with a way to win the war. Mm -hmm. And so, but she has a wonderful take on it. She is very, um, she's, she's very knowledgeable about her subject. Right. Um, she's a redhead, sort of young looking okay. lady. And I really look forward to her. You know, you, you like to have one or two new presenters. And I go yes. back to the tried and true, oh, but I yeah. like to have one or two new ones. <laughs> and sometimes they become the tried and true. Okay. Monique Laney has already done this program at the Archives and Histories. Architects program was a very prestigious series. So we're getting some big guns coming in on this yeah. one, and I think she'll do a good job. I really do. I look I forward to this. Will. Good, mm -hmm. good. And as always, the last one is Wednesday, November 4th, Dolores Hydock, Spirit, Souls, and Saints, Stories About and For the Angels Hiding Among Us. Always a favorite. Dolores, Dolores. can do anything she wants to. I always tell her, you know, just tell us some stories. And she has such a wonderful repertoire of things that she talks about, yes. and I never know what she's going to do. She'll say, send, send me your title. Mm -hmm. Let me look at your title. <laughs> And think about some stories that I might bring to the table to conclude your series. She I say she takes us out on a high note. And so yes. when I sent her our, um, I sent her our title, Looking Forward to the Past, and she came back in, she said, I'm going to tell some stories about the oh. supernatural. Oh. Because the population in general is fascinated with the supernatural. Oh, yes. I'm going to start out with a true story, and it's about my white cat. Oh. And the white cat is on the front of the brochure. If you okay. notice that yes. Dolores is on there with the white cat. And yes. beautiful cat. And I didn't realize that the cat had gotten killed. But the last time she was here, I always ask about the cat. We've used this picture in the newspaper yes. many times of the white cat with her because it's a beautiful cat. And she loved it so much. Oh. It was a stray that she took in and oh. came to love. And I love cats. Oh, I know. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she's telling a story about um, an experience that she had with this cat as related to her precious mother that she lost two or three years ago. And so she has real strong feelings about about the cat and how much she loved it and how much she loved her mother and she connects those two things in some way. And then she just plain has some stories that she tells about the supernatural, kind of ghost stories, sort oh, of. Fun. I don't really know. 
I just know that Dolores is the best storyteller I have ever seen. Yes. I have never seen anybody that can touch her with her stories. And she has a repertoire that will include Casey at the Bat, <laughs> uh, baseball stories. <laughs> Uh, she can just talk about anything. She, she brings short stories to the table. She brings us a good sense of literature. Mm -hmm. And then she just does plain old fun stories that are just great comedies. Yeah. So she is really good and we're very pleased that she can close uh -huh. out for us. And she closes out every series she for does. us. She's, she loves Sylacauga. Oh, I'm glad. Well, we love her. Mm -hmm. We do. She's made me laugh. She's made me cry. Oh, yes. She's had me on the edge of my seat every time. <laughs> she's <laughs> she good. Is, she's and you know, great. people come in from Birmingham and Pell City. Mm -hmm. She has a following. Okay. that they go wherever she is to see her. So we always have a pretty big crowd for her. Good. They're not good. always so caught, but we have a lot of people come in from everywhere for her. We do. There's mm -hmm. always guests who've heard about it uh, from somewhere. Uh, well, that concludes the series here. Now, there's something else coming up on September 18th. Friday, September 18th, we're having a tribute to Jimmy Purcell. We are, and uh, this was, uh, I didn't really realize that Mr. Purcell, there was a book out on Mr. Purcell and his, <clears throat> his success in business and life and his Christian ethics and how yes. they've applied to, how he has since 1976 applied those to his mm -hmm. life. But there is a man named Harold Fickett who has written a book in collaboration with Mr. Purcell. I'm mm -hmm. sure he spent many, many, many hours with him and with his family. Right in writing a book called Finding the Ultimate Multiplier. Amazing. And this is about the life and uh, successes, business and personal successes of Jimmy. He likes to be called Jimmy. Okay. Jimmy Purcell. And so um, Mr. Purcell came by to see me just a few days ago and I spent some time with him. He's always a delightful man yes. to talk to and he's been very good to the library and to the causes that we have. And so we decided that the library basically we don't really do book signings, but we decided that we would do something a little bit different, that we would just celebrate yes. his, his life and his book that's letting other people know what he's done and how, how Christian ethics are important and that they can play into right. business success. And he was excited about that idea. He said, I'll do it, Shirley. Here, I really will. So we asked uh, Mike Landers down at the Chamber of Commerce, and Mike and I have always worked well right. together. And, we decided that we would co-host this event. We'll be having it at 10 o'clock and we will gather in the auditorium and we have several people who are coming in to speak to uh, Mr. Purcell's yes. building community and being so good to the area and helping out with the different causes. Yes. It won't be long and drawn out and uh, we'll, we'll do that. He'll have family members there to celebrate with us. I think it's wonderful because Chris is from Sylacauga, mm -hmm. and his wife is from Sylacauga, and he's been here long enough that he's ours. He was born he and is. raised in Talladega. So we're inviting the public to come out. We have a big auditorium there if anybody would like to you know, just come in and be a part yes. of that and join us in that little tribute to him. And then afterwards, we'll have a little reception where people okay. can have refreshments. And then he'll be sitting down in the main part of the library to talk to people. Yes. He'll have his books pre-signed. Okay. And he will have some books if anybody would like to have one. Right. But I'm excited about uh, this event and appreciate so much the fact that we can go together with the Chamber right. of Commerce and the town and salute Mr. Purcell. Celebrate They've been very important to our community. They yeah. have an amazing story. They do. Well, I mm -hmm. can't wait to read the book. We have just uh, less than a minute left, so we'll just recap. Looking forward to the past, the Brown Bag Adult series beginning September 16th with 11 o'clock being the refreshment time. Bring a sandwich. There's dessert and drinks, maybe mm -hmm. chips, things like that. And then at 12 o'clock, the um, series begins in the Harry I. Brown Auditorium. Right. Yeah. And let me reiterate mm -hmm. that South First Bank makes this series yes. possible. They help us with the sponsorships and we bring in speakers from different places and they help with that and also that it is a wonderful thing for you to learn painlessly wow. you just come and you be a part of it it doesn't cost anything mm -hmm. so we invite everyone to come mm -hmm. that's what makes the hard work worthwhile right. is when you come and you enjoy and don't judge these programs you don't know whether you would enjoy them or not try them well we hope you'll join us then thank you